guys, I am here with Breezy the Bichon Puppy. We're going to give her a Bichon Puppy trim, so let's get busy. You ready, Breezy? Yeah? Okay. We're gonna put her straight in the tub. I'm going to use Easy Groom Crystal White Shampoo on her. So her mom mentioned she does like to pop up in the tub. To alleviate that, I'm going to be using the groomer's harness for the tub. The front of the harness has D-rings. I can attach an anchor sold by groomer's harness for the tub that we can hook to the front of the groomer's harness. This will keep her from popping up and lunging. I use a good quality ear cleansing solution, filling up each ear canal with the solution. Rubbing the base of the ear and allowing the dog to shake its head. This removes earwax, dries up any moisture that may have gotten in the ears and loosens up debris. Next, we'll wrap her in a nice warm towel and get her to the drying table where we will fluff dry, stretch dry her hair using an Artero long pen slicker brush. The long pin slicker brush is great because it does not break hair. The pins are not that stiff, but they have enough of a slicker action to stretch dry, fluff dry this type of hair. You want to brush the top knot forward and up from the ears, up from the ears, and forward, and up, and up, and forward back and forth, back and forth, getting the hair to stand up and out. As you move down the neck, you want to bring the neck hair all forward. You always want to keep the dryer pointing in exactly the area that you are working on when you are stretch drying. And you want to brush with real light, quick strokes. It takes a lot of finesse to learn how to stretch dry a coat. You never want to use too stiff of a brush as that will not only reach down to the skin and potentially scrape it, but it will also have too much drag and pull in the hair. So you want to make it a very comfortable experience using the lightest possible brush that will be effective. When stretch drying the legs, you want to brush the hair upwards to get the hair to stand up and out and to train it to stand up and out especially the hawks, you want to brush those upwards so that it trains the hair to stay in position.
I'm going to trim the pads of the feet with a 30 blade. Taking her mustache backwards, using a 40 blade, I'm going to trim off the front area here between the nose and the lips. Now I'm going to come under the eyes with the 40 blade and expose her halos. Next, I'm going to clean out a little bit of this at the corner of her eyes using a 15 blade. To bring her up on leg a bit, I'm going to use a 5 blade against the grain on the underside all the way up to her elbows. Using a small pair of curved shears, I am going to brush down the hair on the feet and trim off anything that falls below the pads. Now with the dog standing and the feet on the table, I'm going to comb the hair down around the feet and then lift the hair up and out so that I don't cut off any hair that I want to keep. That is the purpose of lifting the hair up and out. Make sure the dog's legs are four square under them and they are not too far forward or too far back so that you can get the right shape. I also like to make sure my dog's not slouching and that is the reason for the chin rest to get the dog up on its feet and not scrunch down. Comb the hair all down and out and then lift up and out before you start scissoring for this coat type. I've got my scissors laying flat on the table. Kind of flat. They're angled up just a hair, but the scissors are actually laying on the table as I go to scissor. And then I can take it and round it up. And that builds it out nicely. So right now, I'm only focusing on the feet and not the legs. After I do the feet, I like to set my outline. And the first thing I'm going to do is trim this hair under the neck. I'm going to use a five blade. I'm pulling all the beard hair forward and right about where the little Adam's apple is there is where I'm going to bring it in tight. And it's kind of like a diamond shape with the wider part up under the beard coming down into a point right here. And rather than setting the top line first, I'm going to set the underline. I'm 
I'm going to take my back leg, angle it up towards the last rib. Laying my hand flat on the table, my wrist, I can angle exactly where I want to go with these scissors. What I picture in my mind is a hexagon shape. I want it flat underneath, angling out, angling up, angling over, and flat. Let's set the underline on the other side. So now that I can see where I'm going there, I can set the top line. Visually, the lines that I see when I'm doing this is taking this back leg and going straight up into the neck hair. And right here, you can see the hole of the neck hair that I really need to fill. But the line goes like this. So you can literally make that indent of a line to know where you need to set your top line. And as you can see here, her top line doesn't look that attractive, but it's just the hair, it's not the dog. So I wanna come in and level that out. Okay. A big mistake I see a lot of people make is when they're doing this, they take off too much hair here. You only want to come straight up the middle and leave those hips built out at this point. Don't cut, don't come here. You'll cut out too much hair. Straight up the middle. And you want to stay behind the dip behind the shoulder blades in the dog's actual confirmation at this time. And be careful you don't angle your scissors down when you're doing this. Keep them flat. I have groomed this dog's mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. And they are all sensitive under the rear. So I'm going to assume that this dog will be as well. So I'm using a seven blade under here and I'm going to have an extremely light touch to clean her up just a bit. For now I'm just gonna scissor her flat across here. Combing this hair off the back side of the tail right here. We're going to take our curve shears in backwards and just snip that off on either side of the tail to set the tail on high. When setting in the angulation, you have to be very careful how and where you cut and at which times. So I'm taking a small pair of curve shears and I'm coming in above the hock with my scissors flat out to the side. 
setting in my angles. She's jumpy because she's a puppy. So I have to be judicious and careful. Otherwise, I will cut out too much hair, which I don't want to do. This is a work in progress. So because she's a puppy, I'm not worried about perfection. I'm worried about outline right now. There's so much a puppy has to learn during this stage. They have to learn how to stand, how to wait, how to be patient. They have to learn to communicate with the groomer and the groomer has to learn how to communicate with them. It's important to read your breed standard when doing this and understand how the standard applies to the groom. If you're doing a breed profile trim, making the dog look like it's breed should. So she's already pretty short in the front end. So I really don't have any outline work to do there. But her beard is throwing off the overall balance of what I'm trying to achieve. So to do the balance work right now and the outline, let's work on the beard, the lower beard a little bit. And to do that, I need to figure out where the sides of the neck are going to be. So I'll start behind the ear and hold the ear forward. Come up from underneath to where that line is going to start. She's a little jumpy about this. Trimming off some of this behind that chunk that's taken out is going to help to minimize that. So we're going to round it up from there. You want to keep their neck hair out of the way while you're doing this. It's easy to cut out a chunk of neck hair. Make sure the foot's up under them good. And you also want to keep the head straight when you're doing this. If you turn the head, you're likely to cut out too much hair. I'm going to take my shear straight up from about the line of the elbow, coming straight up into the neck hair. up behind that ear. And again, she's jumpy. That's okay. Just being a puppy. Now I want to set her legs up under her a bit. So I'm coming down, then I'm going to come in under the point of shoulder just a little, just enough to set those legs under her. And what that does is it will give you a visual of the dog's bone structure. It will give you a point of shoulder by cutting in here, cutting in here, it gives you that point and you want the point of shoulder to match up with the point of rump. We'll tie it all together in the finish work. So that's how you know where to create those lines. 
So this is where she has the big hole. We're going to just pretend that doesn't exist. Come straight up. Hold the ear forward, keep the head straight forward. Come up behind that ear. Comb this beard hair down from here and round it up under. Good girl. She's doing much better on this side. Now we're gonna set the leg up under. Coming in just a little. Coming up just a little, and then dropping this down. All right. Now we can sit under that chin. To do this, I like to pull the ears up. When you pull her ears up, you see when she's at, at attention how far up the ears go. That's really important to pull the ears up when you're setting your face. For hers right now, we want her ears to grow down a bit and fill in those holes. So I'm taking the ears out of the equation of where I set the face at this time. Because see with the ears down, how far down they come. But if she were looking at a squeaky toy or whatever, they're gonna be up here. Way up there. So always trim the Bichon head with the ears up. All right. Good girl. She's a very good puppy. She's a very, very good puppy, yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. So this area here, you can see this hair hanging down. It's always tempting to pull the leg up, comb this down and trim it. But when you do, you lose a fill of hair that you really need. So you always wanna make sure your feet are on the table when you're doing any kind of precise trimming. It's very important. I'm dragging my comb up. She's already thoroughly combed out and I can just kind of pick over it and drag it up for the scissoring. Okay, I like to get the entire side of the dog combed and in place all at once. so that I can scissor the entire side of the dog all together. When working on this area, I'm coming straight up and straight off the dog. So what I mean by straight off the dog is I don't angle my scissors down at all. I'm going a crossed in a flat fluid motion to keep the width to the dog. I will angle it in for that hexagon idea at the appropriate time. At this point in the scissoring, I keep it more boxed off. Right in here, you want to comb this, drag it up and out before you trim it using my curves backwards 
going to create a little bit of a windshield wiper motion here. Coming straight down the front leg to the toes. In effect, that'll mean it's very tight at the toes, tight up top, and fuller in the middle. When clients ask me to make their dog one length all over, they lose a lot of style because you need inflections in the length of hair in order to create style. It doesn't have to have a lot of hair. It just has to have hair in the right places. So here at the lower leg, I'm going to take my curves backwards and give the lower leg some definition and round it down into it. You notice I don't talk to puppies too much when I'm working on them. They're too excitable. I can't stop and give them as much praise unless they're insecure little dogs. Most dogs, most young dogs, puppies, you say anything to them or make eye contact with them, they become all wiggles and jiggles. and then you can't scissor them or work on them. So it's better to reserve your praises for times when the dog is released from the work. Taking my curves in backwards above the hock. And on the front of the back leg, lower front. Bringing my hock straight down. On the front of the leg, you don't want it to just like square off. You want to angle towards the opposite front leg to give some roundness and fullness to this leg. Here you can angle up this way. I've got my scissors like this to bring angle to it. I want these front legs to drop off the shoulders all the way to the table in a nice straight line, turning neither in nor out, and you want it to retain the shape when the dog is moving. To separate the front legs, I'm going to comb this hair forward where the leg meets the chest. I'm going to trim it in nicely right there. Then I'm going to comb the hair up and out, all the way around the leg, and give some daylight between these legs. Coming straight down to the table. A 
as I comb, I'm just dragging everything upwards. So now when you look behind the dog, you can see this hair coming up over the top line right here. I'm going to flatten that off. Comb it up again. And see how this gives us these nice wide hips nice substantial rear and then right as you get towards the end of this trim and you're combing this hair up towards the top line you can now take your curves to round it down and just take off that edge Now again, we need to grow neck hair. I trim my line where I want my neck hair to be, not where it is. So I'm gonna take my curves backwards and I'm gonna pretend the hair's there and angle up into this top knot. as if the fill of hair was there in the middle. You can improve the height of the neck hair by taking it in a little tighter behind the ears. Sometimes less is more. going to use some picture perfect rub it between my fingers and part the hair on the nose and just move this out of the way for this part of the trim so that I'm not tempted to snip out any of that dragging my comb down over the eyes Pulling this hair down and forward. I'm going to take my curved shears backwards up over the eye with the shears straight out so that I don't cut up into the top knot at all when I'm doing this. Good girl. I'm going to scissor out this little bit to enhance her halos. And that is the dark colored skin like an eyeliner around their eyes. So exposing that and bringing it out really helps the Bichon to look like a Bichon. Since she has so many places to grow in on her head, I'm going to be very careful about what and where I trim. I don't want to fix those things at this time. I want them to fill in. So I'm gonna pull her ears up by grabbing the loose skin at the back of her head, pulling it up. I'm gonna comb all this hair on the cheeks that falls below the ears down and out. And then I'm going to round this hair up into those ears. When working on puppies, you have to be careful to stop those scissors fast when they jerk their head or move their head quickly until they learn their table manners. I'm 
Now we're combing the entire head up and around. You're getting tired, honey. Oh, the baby getting tired. We're almost done. I'm just going to round this around. It's a good idea to let a puppy have a nap and potty break during the groom. So as you're going to finish the dog, you just keep going over everything within the outline, tightening it up, pulling it all together and bringing it into balance. I want my lines straight down parallel in the back. I typically bring them a little tighter on the inside line of the hocks to give the rear a nice strong driving appearance. It does take quite a bit of combing from the skin out to pull this type of work together so that it does not fall apart when the dog moves or the next time the dog is washed and blow dried, but it all stays nice and tight and well done. You don't want your trims to just look good on the table. You want them to hold together. So even when trimming from the side, don't make the mistake of trimming the ears into the beard where they lay when they're all the way down. Do it with the ears up. You can push everything forward, pushing the ears with it from behind to see what that's going to look like. But this little chunk here, I'm not even going to attempt to blend out. Just leaving that there. Once it's all filled in, a few months from now, we can blend that out. So I'm pulling her a little tighter, rounding down under the underside to give her more style. 
to not make her just look like a blob of hair, but to be a very stylish little girl. combing the top of this head back and we're going to comb this forward in layers here comb it forward and round it around then comb the next layer forward and build it out fuller And comb more down. And build it out fuller. Good girl. Gives us a nice little overhang without it being too cumbersome around the eyes. With the chin in place here, we're gonna comb everything down using our straights, come underneath, neaten up that underline. Now I'm going to thoroughly comb her out one last time. Good girl. Taking this back leg and angling towards the opposite front leg. Making my hawk appear straight up and down. Such a good baby. The origin of the Bichon Frege is a bit fuzzy, not unlike the little dog himself. One school of thought is that the Bichon originated on the island of Malta, off of Spain, the product of the Maltese, the miniature Spaniel, and the miniature Poodle. Others believe the Bichon is a descendant of the Barbet, a water Spaniel with curly or frizzy coat from the Mediterranean. Though the early origins are not precisely known, most Bichoners accept that the ancestors of today's Bichon arrived on the European continent in the 14th century with sailors who brought them to use as barter. There were four variations of Bichon type dogs. Although these groups share a common ancestry, they are distinct breeds. A combination of these Bichon breeds eventually formed the Bichon Frege. 
though we will never know in what proportions. The breed's tremendous history make it difficult to determine the exact origins of the Bichon Frege. We do know, however, that the Bichon's ancient roots can be traced back to the era before Christ, and that at some point in its history, this breed and its predecessors have been desired by many Western civilizations. At the time of the Renaissance in Europe, the French acquired a fascination with Italian art and culture. Scholars, craftsmen, Italian artifacts, and artists made their way to the French courts. The Bichon, too, was a fashionable trend. This little dog became a pampered pet of the royal family and those with the greatest of wealth. The king and ladies of the court carried these tiny dogs by placing them in baskets attached around their necks by colorful ribbons. It is said that King Henry III was never without the company of his Bichons. This may sound a bit too frou-frou, but remember, this was the Renaissance. The more lace, satin, bows, curls, ribbons, and perfume, the better. In fact, the French verb bijonner means to pamper and to make beautiful. At the time of the French Revolution, the Bichon began to lose its favored position as the nobility was losing theirs, and by the 19th century, these pampered pets were exiled to the streets to fend for themselves. To some dogs, this would be a living end, but not so to the Bichon. Because of their personalities, they made wonderful circus dogs, quick of mind, sturdy, agile, trusting, and loving. There are also stories of gypsies traveling with these dogs who could smile and perform clever tricks. As street dogs, they were forced to survive on their own and they quickly learned life was much easier if you were agreeable and friendly to the world in general. A little smile could go a long way. So you can see my scissors are at a slight angle. This is where we take our scissors this way. So we're flat underneath, angling up, going straight across, angling slightly, and flat up. Are you ready for napsies? Oh, so ready for naps. Oh, he is. He ready for naps. Yes, he's a good girl. Yes, he says I just don't understand all this. It's just crazy. It's just absolutely crazy what do people do to me. Yes, it is. I have to get fluffed and buffed and combed and scissored and blow dried and washed and everything, get manicure and pedicure and everything. Yes. And get manicure and pedicure and everything. You <laughs> sweet girl. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to tap the notification bell so that you don't miss a single upload. See you next time, guys. Bye.